In today's three steps to sketch, we'll look at the most basic cotangent graph, y equals cotangent x, and we'll graph it using the three steps to sketch method. So here's our outline and our grid. And like, it's likely you already know what the graph of y equals cotangent x looks like, but we're going to graph it today using our method so that we better understand the three steps to sketch method and can use it in further examples. And I'll post videos of some more complex work examples soon. All right, so step one we know is to find the essentials. So we need to identify a and b first. Remember, a is just the leading coefficient. Here it's an understood one. And that's going to help us with what I like to call our curve setting points. B is the coefficient in front of X, another understood one here. And that's going to tell us a couple of things. One, it's going to tell us how many cycles of our graph happen between zero and pi, since it's a cotangent graph. And it also helps us calculate the period. For cotangent, you do that using the formula pi divided by B. So of course here, it's pretty simple. Pi divided by one, our period is pi. And remember, period is just the length of one horizontal cycle. Now that we've done some of this analysis, we're ready to choose how to label our axes. And we like to do this very strategically for the horizontal axis. Take your period and divide by four. And we're going to do this because that's how many key features are in the base pattern in the next step. So everything will align nicely with a horizontal tick mark if you do it this way. So again, take that period, divide by four, so we'll count the tick marks on the horizontal axis using pi over four. For our vertical axis, one is usually a really simple but effective scale. Let's go ahead and label our axes now. Starting with the horizontal axis, count by pi over four. So we have one pi over four, two pi over four reduces to pi over two, three pi over four, four pi over four reduces to, five, to pi, and then five pi over four. On the negative side of the axis, we'll have all the same values, just negative. So if you're working along with me, pause, and I'll go ahead and get that labeled. All right, so hopefully you labeled along and uh, during my pause, but this is what your horizontal axis should look like. Now let's label our vertical axis. Easy enough, we're counting by ones. And our grid is all set up for our graph. But before we move on to step two, where we plot our base pattern, I like to go ahead and find the asymptotes equation. And this is an equation that will generate all of your asymptotes for the whole graph. So it's just a quick little formula that you can use. I like to remember that the first asymptote of the parent cotangent graph happens on the y-axis, so it happens at zero. Think back to that connection that cotangent has with tangent, they're reciprocals. And if you know that tangent starts with that point on the origin, that's a, a zero value, you know that then the reciprocal of zero is undefined. And that's a, a quick little way that you can remember that the first asymptote of an unshifted cotangent graph is at zero. And we know these asymptotes happen once a cycle. So the quick formula for this asymptotes equation, I'll just write off to the side, is x equals zero plus pi over b k. So remember that pi over b term is your period. And then k represents an integer, and depending on what integer you substitute in, you'll get a different asymptote along the graph. Okay, so it's pretty easy to go ahead and find the asymptotes equation for our specific graph here. We know our value for b is just one, so our asymptotes equation will be x equals zero plus pi k. So our first as asymptote, let k equal zero, and you'll find you have the asymptote on the y-axis at x equals zero. Um, practice with this a little bit, substitute in one for k, you'll simplify and see you should have another asymptote at x equals pi. Um, you could substitute in k is two, there's another one at two pi. If you let k be negative one, you simplify and see there should be an asymptote at x equals negative pi. And I'd just like to go ahead and do this in the analysis step, in this first step, so that when we graph, we already have that expectation of where our asymptote should fall. It's a nice way to double check yourself. All right, now we're ready for step two. Let's plot our base pattern. So remember for an unshifted cotangent graph, the pattern goes asymptote, first curve setting point, zero or x-intercept, second curve setting point. 
Okay, and hopefully you have a general idea of what a cotangent graph looks like. If not, this is a great one to learn on. So let's go ahead and plot one cycle of y equals cotangent x. We start with our asymptote here on the y-axis. Our first point should align with our first horizontal tick mark as we move to the right. And you find the y-coordinate of this point simply looking at the value of a. So our a is 1. So the point happens at pi over 4, 1. Move to the next horizontal tick mark to the right, pi over 2. We know that the third part of our base pattern is a 0, or an x-intercept. So plot that point right there. And our final piece of our base pattern will happen at the third horizontal tick mark to the right, so that's at 3 pi over 4. And you find the y-coordinate simply by taking the opposite value of a, so that'll be a negative 1 in this case. So plot a point at 3 pi over 4, negative 1. And here you have it. We're ready for step 3. Let's sketch in the actual graph, and then we'll repeat for as many cycles as we want. So our cotangent curve comes down like this, hits through our points and our zeros, and continues on to what we know will be an asymptote that's the start of our next cycle. So let's go ahead and just sketch on a few more points here, um, a little repetition, some more cycles. We know we start our pattern. We're just repeating the green one over and over again um, in a different horizontal location. So we start with an asymptote. You'll have your first curve setting point at 5 pi over 4, 1. And then, of course, you would continue on. So we can show a quick sketch of that. You'd have a 0 at 6 pi over 4, or that reduces to 3 pi over 2. And let's work in the negative direction. So I like to just count 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks to the left of the asymptote on the y-axis, and then you can start a clean pattern. So we have an asymptote here. Notice it's at x equals negative pi. We talked about we should be expecting an asymptote there. And um, if you want to look back over to the right, you see that one at pi when k equals 1. Okay, so back to the pattern. We have asymptote, curve setting point, 0, curve setting point, and sketch in this cycle. If you'd wanted to, you could have worked the pattern backwards, so done the lower curve setting point, the 0, the higher curve setting point asymptote, totally up to you. And we can use that to know we should have a point at negative 5 pi over 4, negative 1. That's that lower curve setting point. And we'd have a 0 at the next tick mark if we had drawn it in. That'd be at negative 6 pi over 4 or negative 3 pi over 2 if you reduce. All right, so here we have three full cycles of y equals cotangent x. And hopefully this helped you get a better understanding of how to use the three steps to sketch method for unshifted cotangent graphs. If you understand the steps with this, you should be able to graph any unshifted cotangent graph. Uh, be sure to check the link in the video description. I will post a lot more worked examples of cotangent graphs. So check those out and thanks for watching.